Tonight, Prime Minister Alan Chastney speaks to the press about what they acknowledge as St. Lucia's impressive handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Police take Friday traffic by storm, issuing something other than tickets. And a textbook drive to get children in need off to school fully equipped. The details of these stories and more coming up. This is the Hop 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Jones. Good night. It is Friday, the 28th of August, 2020. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. With St. Lucia being placed under a spotlight for the impressive management of the COVID-19 pandemic, Prime Minister Alan Chastney is sharing the wealth of knowledge on what steps to take. The PM appeared on Ian King Live on Sky News to speak about the island's success and to stress on the importance of pre-testing before travel to the region. Rochelle Gonzalez begins our reporting. St. Lucia is currently being lauded for its response to the COVID-19 pandemic and is receiving rave reviews the world over. This was solidified after the U.S. Center for Disease Control had reduced St. Lucia's COVID-19 rating to the lowest, level one, as one of only eight countries globally, noting that over the last 28 days, new cases of COVID-19 in St. Lucia decreased or stabilized. In addition to this news, the island was rated at number two for countries in the world that could provide you with a gorgeous and safe place to wait out the pandemic. On Friday morning, Prime Minister Alan Chastney appeared on Ian King Live on Sky News to speak about St. Lucia's success in the handling of COVID-19. From the, the get-go, we started a process of uh, adopting a term called coexisting with COVID. Um, and uh, we adopted some very stringent protocols, uh, starting with the fact that uh, in the early days that we could not proceed in opening up the economy until we were able to solve the COVID problem. Um, so we locked down like many of the other countries and have been slowly opening up our economies um, since uh, the uh, May. Um, in June, we opened up our doors for tourism and we started receiving our first set of guests in uh, the beginning of July. So we've had almost two months of receiving uh, tourists into our country and the protocols that we've adopted um, have been working very successfully. The PM continued on to advocate for pre-testing before travel to the region. He highlighted the fact that although there have been tourist arrivals in the thousands and more are expected in the coming months, the disease is still being kept at bay through strict protocols. And how many people have started visiting since you welcomed people back? 9th of July, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, we started on uh, July 9th and we've had over 5,000 uh, arrivals, primarily Americans and some Brits. Um, uh, since then, uh, we do pre-testing um, before people uh, come down. We have some very stringent protocols, both for the guest as well as for the staff. Um, and we're now in the process of going into phase two, in which we now will open up our some of our attractions. So when the tourists are here right now, they're really restricted to being on the property and doing some sea tours. And we're hoping to be able to open up some of our land tours in, uh, in the month of September. I was a uh, vice president of marketing and sales for Air Jamaica when we had 9-11. Um, and it would be difficult to think that persons would have traveled if in fact the stringent security processes that followed 9-11 had not been implemented. And we think the same thing here. Airlines cannot fly um, with COVID social distancing, meaning the middle aisle free. Um, it's just not economically feasible for them to do that. And I think it helps a in a big way, if persons are pre-tested, you know that you're going on a flight in which everybody's been pre-tested. Um, and we have seen that that protocol has worked very well. The PM expressed happiness whilst reporting that there have been no COVID-19 related deaths on island. He also expressed pride in the neighboring islands and the way they have handled the pandemic themselves. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. On Friday morning, if you were stopped by the Babano police, it would not have been for a ticket. Inspector in charge of the Babano police station, Terry Bradley, and his team handed out food items to motorists as they stopped along the Timon Balata Highway. Bradley says this is an initiative which forms part of the community policing drive and was conceptualized by the Babano police station. Geneve Gonzag brings us this feel-good story. 
Often, it is nerve-wracking when one is asked to stop for a traffic check. However, on Friday, many residents and motorists in the community of Babono were in for a pleasant surprise from officers of the Babono Police Station who gave out food items to the vehicles they stopped along the Timon Balata Highway. Inspector of the Babono Station, Terry Bradley, gave out seven a little insight as to what the initiative was. Today, the Babono Police conducted a traffic check with a difference. Our primary objective was not to issue traffic tickets, but we had some produce from Babono we wanted to give out to persons. We gave out breadfruit, green fig, makabu, and other seasoning we had from Babono. This is part of our community policing drive because we always appreciate the fact that the police must work with the community to keep the community safer. The initiative, Bradley says, was more than welcomed by the public. He explained that the police were thrilled to be able to put a smile on the faces of the individuals who received the produce. The public, I believe, embraced this idea. Many persons were very happy to receive, and not only to receive, but, you know, the gesture, I think persons appreciated the fact that the police was actually giving them something. So I believe it was a very, very good initiative. Persons were even asking us, you know, to, 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 to continue on that venture. And I think it was kind of a surprise to many persons who thought that they were going to go through the rigorous process of, you know, producing documents, etc. But like I said, our primary objective was not to issue any tickets, but to ensure that, you know, we gave something to the motorists. He says there is a great need for proper community and police relations and hinted that more initiatives to engage and support the community of Babono will be held soon. We're hoping to continue such initiatives in the future. We're hoping not necessarily doing the very same thing today, but we're hoping that, you know, we could come up with other ways to, you know, give back. During the course of Friday morning, over 200 breadfruits were given out to motorists. The officers indicated that in addition to seeing the smiles of the people receiving the food items, it felt good being able to give back. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janine Gonzaga. Tourism Minister Dominic Fede has indicated that the government of St. Lucia had a part to play in the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC's decision to upgrade the island to the lowest COVID-19 threat level. Minister Fede said it would have been remiss on the part of the government to allow the island to be misrepresented in such a manner. Rochelle Gonzalez reports. The island continues to revel in the news that the Center for Disease Control upgraded their travel advisory for St. Lucia from Level 3, where they warned U.S. citizens to reconsider traveling to the destination, to its lowest warning of Level 1, indicating that the risk is low. With that said, Tourism Minister Dominic Fede indicated earlier this week that the government of St. Lucia played a bigger role in the change than one might realize. On Friday, August 7th, after the U.S. government blindsided a number of countries in the Eastern Caribbean, including St. Lucia, by issuing Level 3 travel advisories upon the group of nations, Health Minister Mary Isaac expressed shock and confusion. She also stated that an explanation was owed to the region and that the advisory should be reviewed. Following the news of the update, Fede answered to whether the CDC was contacted by the St. Lucian government, asking them to review their decision. Well, there has been a uh, continuous engagement between our government and the um, U.S. government via its embassy in Barbados. Uh, we wanted to ensure that how our country was depicted internationally was in line and commensurate with how we were actually doing on the ground with COVID-19. Uh, you know, sometimes because of our smallness and when, you know, global organizations are taking a particular measurement, whether it is about public health indices or whether it's about economic indices or social development indices, they tend to sort of make broad brush um, you know, assumptions and, and we believe that in this case we um, have been able to clarify and to show um, rather uh, clearly where we stand as one of the best countries in the world in how we are managing COVID-19. Fede said meanwhile, works are continuing to ensure that the nation continues to recover at a steady pace. We continue to meet with other sectors. I've just left a meeting with the car rental sector. We've had a meeting yesterday with uh, the events sector to have this continuous engagement to see how we can um, 
look at a full recovery of the economy and to see how we can, in a phased, safe, measured, calculated, strategic way, uh, open up these sectors to allow for putting the economy back to work. We are still very, very deeply concerned about the number of people who are out of work, the number of people who uh, continue to face uh, difficulties uh, economically because of the constraints brought about by COVID-19 economically and otherwise. Fede said he is extremely pleased that St. Lucia was named by the CDC as part of a prestigious group of only eight countries in the world for doing an exceptional job in the management of COVID-19. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. A city gate man has been charged for illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. 27-year-old Kermsa Maxius was arrested on Tuesday, the 25th of August, during a joint police operation between the Grosley Criminal Investigations Department and a patrol team at about 8.45 p.m. Maxius was found in possession of a .38 special revolver and four rounds of ammunition. He was charged on Thursday, the 27th of August, and taken before a magistrate who remanded him in custody until the 14th of October 2020. Maxius was charged under Section 22 of the Firearms Act of 2013. They often cry outreach, also known as the Toko Foundation, created by St. Lucian artist and Goodwill Ambassador Taj Weeks on Thursday, the 27th of August, presented the Ministry of Education with laptops and tablets to assist schools in meeting the demand for increased access to digital devices. Weeks and his board members have donated to various sectors and organizations on the island before in the areas of at-risk youth, education, sports, and health. The brief handing over ceremony at the Ministry of Education headquarters at the waterfront saw the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, principals, and other education officials expressing their thanks to the Toko Foundation for its invaluable support. Thank you so much. Um, we are truly appreciative of the collaborative effort to get these things out to the students who truly need them. And um, as, as the CEO said, we know you'll take care of it. We know they will be uh, used for good. So again, we're thanking you in anticipation from Toko. Thank you very much. Today, we are so privileged to have received from the Toko Foundation devices for eight of our educational institutions across the island. And that gratitude we extend because we know that it was given with a genuine heart, really looking at the educational attainment of our children. That was the founder of Toko Taj Weeks, followed by the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Fiona Meyer. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Still to come, Dr. Venus Cherry puts on a textbook drive to ensure that students get what they need for back to school. Youth speak on the challenges of changing public perception of youth who are from underprivileged communities. And a hero's mural depicts outstanding citizens. We have that and more coming up after the break.